This is the new Suzuki Ignis, and it looks a little bit like an SUV that's been shrunk in the wash. Now, Suzuki has actually borrowed some of the design cues from its famous whiz kid from the 1970s for this car. Yeah, you have no idea what the Suzuki whiz kid is. <laughs> well, look, there you go. This is what it looked like. See those slats at the back? You've got them on the Ignis. And if I show you the front of the car, it looks like it's wearing a mask, as does the Ignis. Now this is a small car and it's got a small price tag. And if you click up there to go to carwire.co.uk, you can see the very latest prices for this car. You can also configure your ideal Ignis and then get offers back from dealers so you can buy at a price you're confident in. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Matt, this is a small car. It's gonna be tiny on the inside, but not so. You see, that tall body means that even if I sit up straight, I've got plenty of headroom. So people over six foot will be fine back here. But the best bit is the legroom. I mean, just look at that. I've got loads of knee room here. And because the seats are actually raised up, you can slide your feet underneath them and really stretch out. I mean, that's incredible. In such a small car to be able to sit like this, it's really, really comfortable. Now, on the entry-level car, you get a three-seater across the back seats here. But in the top two specs, you get these two-seater chairs, which does reduce the practicality, but there's something that makes up for that. You can actually slide the chairs, and if I pull the lever on the top, you can, there we go, recline them as well. Another thing I like about this car is, well, if you look down here, you've got some easy access Isofix fittings. There's no covers to flip up. In terms of storage, it's all right. There's some door bins, which can just about hold a 750 milliliter bottle of water. There's another space there as well. Another thing I like about this car is the fact that the rear doors, they open to almost 90 degrees, which really helps when you're trying to get in and out, as does the raised seat. Ideal if you're transporting your elderly relatives about. In terms of the boot space, the actual load volume is not too far off that of a Volkswagen Polo, which is pretty good considering how small this car is. There is one thing to be aware of though, if you go for the four-wheel drive version, it does reduce the boot capacity by about 30%, but still, look, I can fit a large suitcase in here. And remember those sliding seats? It doesn't matter too much if you do have the four-wheel drive version, because look, then I can just slide these seats using the catches on the top forward to create more room. If I need even more room, of course, yeah, the seats fold down. But as you'd imagine with a car that's so cheap, they don't lie completely flat. Well, they do lie flat, but it's just a completely different level to the rest of the boot floor. So there's a huge ridge that you'd have to listen to over if you want to push it to the front. And you might be wondering, what the heck is under here? Look, wow. Okay, so it's just the tire repair kit and nothing else. Any other useful features in here? Any? Any useful? No, there's none. No other useful features in the boot, but hey, like I said before, it's a really cheap car. Now, if you click up there, you can see my full in-depth practicality video. So much stuff you can cram into this car's boot. How easy it is to fit a child seat? And just what it's like with two adults in the back. Can't show you with three because this is just the two-seater version, isn't it? So, this Suzuki Ignis, it's cool on the outside, and it's also pretty cool here on the inside. I really like the way that Suzuki has tried to brighten up this car's cabin by giving it this two-tone effect here on the dash. There's also body-coloured trims here on the inside and down here. Look, you've even got the slats which mimic those at the back of the car. Actually, do you notice that? Look, when you tap that, it just moves. In fact, some of the materials in here just feel so cheap and nasty. It's almost like the interior has been constructed from recycled microwave meal cartons. And, you know, look at this. <laughs> it is, it's a bit flimsy in places. Cubby spaces are all right though, so decent sized glove box. And the door bins can hold a 1.5 litre bottle of water. There's another cubby up here, though I don't know what you're going to put in there because when you accelerate, uh, that anything will fall out of there. There's more space down here and some cup holders here. You've also got two USB sockets here for charging your mobile phone or a separate charger there if you need it. And you know what? I probably shouldn't complain too much about the interior quality because this is quite an inexpensive car. Yet yeah, equipment levels are really impressive. So all models get DAB digital radio. You also get Bluetooth and air conditioning. If you step up to the mid-level car, you then get digital climate control with this special console to control it. You also get a reversing camera, a touchscreen, and satellite navigation. Plus, that includes Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The only problem is, is that it's an aftermarket system by Pioneer, and it's not really all that nice to use. The graphics are a bit dull. The system's is tad confusing, and check these little buttons out. Look, these little shortcut buttons, they're just so small and dinky and difficult to operate while you're on the move. Now, if you click up there, you can actually see my full in-depth video review of the infotainment system. Right then, let's hit the road to find out what the Suzuki Ignis is like to drive. 
the Ignis is a brilliant car to drive around town. I mean, it's just so easy. So you've got nice like steering, very snickety gear change. But the best thing about it has to be the fact that you sit up pretty high compared to other small cars. So you get a good view out. Another thing that makes this car quite good in town is the suspension because it's nice and soft. So it's not uncomfortable over bumps, though it never ever feels settled. And bigger bumps do kind of send a jolt through the cabin. And this car really does start to show its weaknesses when you take it on a faster road, especially a twisty one such as this, because when you try and go around a corner at any form of speed, that soft suspension and narrow body means that this car, watch this, whoa, it just rolls about in the corners. And then there's the fact that it's a cheap car, so there's not too much soundproofing. So when you're going at motorway speeds, you do get quite a lot of wind noise. However, despite its failings, there's still something slightly charming about the way this thing drives. In terms of the engine, it's dead simple. There's a 1.2 litre petrol engine, and it's, it's actually quick enough. You can get it with what Suzuki calls a mild hybrid system. So what it does, it helps improve your fuel efficiency because you've got a little electric motor which provides some assistance. Also, when you put your foot down, it adds to the power from the engine, so it just feels a little bit quicker with the hybrid system than without it. The only thing is that you'd have to pay extra for it. It's about 800 quid or so more, so I'm not entirely sure it's worth it. You can also get this car with all-wheel drive. How many cars of this size can do this? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> There we go, we're kind of off-roading. Yeah, this is not a Land Rover, but it's still all right <laughs> on this mild off-road course. As for the economy, well, this is four-wheel drive version. It's supposed to do 60 miles per gallon. This one's doing 50. It's not bad, is it? If you want the car with an automatic gearbox, you can only get it with a two-wheel drive version and the non-hybrid. But at least you can get an auto, right? Now then, it's time for the car wow, five annoying things about the Suzuki Ignis. There's quite a big difference between the roof height and the door height. So for your first month of ownership, you're going to be banging your head as you go to get out until you finally learn to duck. Because the boot opening is narrower than the parcel shelf, it makes the parcel shelf absolutely <laughs> plumbing knife. A nightmare to remove, I'll give up. There's so many warning labels throughout this car. I mean, there's one here, there's another one there, one there, one here on the mat. I mean, there's even more, actually, if you look about the place. It makes you so paranoid that you don't even want to drive the car. There's no sensors in the rear electric windows, so kids might be able to get their limbs caught. And it's going to hurt them. Well, you can move the steering wheel up and down. You can't move it in or out, and that can make it a bit more difficult to find your ideal driving position. Thankfully, it's not all bad news. Here's the car wow five cool features on the Suzuki Ignis. Four wheel drive versions of the Ignis have hill descent control to safely get you down a steep slope. Look, it means you can do it. No footed and it'll do the braking for you. Easy. Though, of course, you should never travel like this. Just making the point. All but the entry-level Ignis has these smart-looking roof rails for the full-on SUV look. Apparently, the brake caliper shape has been designed to minimise drag for improved fuel efficiency. All models are available with auto emergency braking with pedestrian detection and it's standard on the range-topping car. The car has a super tight turning circle, which is just 1.4 metres more than in a black cab taxi. It's funny! I feel dizzy though! If you click it there, you can get more information and find out the best offers you can get on the new Suzuki Ignis. So then, what's my verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Suzuki Ignis. It's a real cool, quirky and interesting small car. It's just built down to a price. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it and subscribe to our channel. Click on the video windows to watch my infotainment video review and my practicality video on the Suzuki Ignis. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was a picture of Suzuki's chairman, Osamu Suzuki, on my mobile phone in the car centre console.